So, you now have a kid. You have a baby to take care of. That means that your gaming habits might change a little bit. My name is Stealth17 and I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite games that I was playing a lot when I just had my first kid. Starting off with XCOM 2, XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, or even XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. XCOM 2 is a game that I've played since it was released in 2016. It is a squad-based, turn-based strategy, and it has a ton of mods that make the game exactly how you want it. Now, what I particularly like about XCOM is that if your kid suddenly wakes up, starts crying, needs your attention for some reason, you just step away from the PC, no worries about whether or not the game will continue to run because it is turn-based strategy. It's going to keep going if you give it new input. Now, XCOM has a very deep tactical layer. Every decision that you make can come back to bite you. It also has a more strategic layer, especially when you install one of the more difficult mods, which is Long War or Long War of the Chosen. And with these, the game just continues to be fresh, it continues to be challenging, and the aliens that you are fighting on Earth get ever tougher. I always find myself coming back to XCOM. It is such a good game because it is so diverse, it has so many different options. And interestingly, I had these moments when I was trying to nurse one of my kids to sleep that I had just walked away from the PC and I could still think, okay, What's going to be my next move? What's going to be the next step? What is going to be the next action that I need to take? And that's the interesting part about XCOM. It just keeps you engaged, it keeps you thinking. And even when you're away, you can start thinking of different formations for your teams, different loadouts, different tactics altogether. And of course, you can customize your soldiers exactly as you see fit. XCOM 2, it just, I always keep coming back to this one. And I really, really recommend it. Next up is Terra Invicta. This is a grand strategy game. You have to pick one of seven factions in this game. You're going to play that faction and every faction has a different goal. From making sure that the aliens which are landing on Earth, which are threatening humanity, you can either fight them, you can try to run away from them, or you can even join them. It has a very, very deep tech tree. There are loads and loads of buttons, parameters, and things that you can start to worry about. Now, it is not an easy game. It's going to take you a while to get into, but that's the good news. Because being such a good game, such a deep game, it also means it's going to take time to learn. And learning is, maybe contradictively, done best when you sometimes step away from the thing that you're learning. So every now and then, just think of the game as you are doing something else. And stepping away really helps to learn it. Now, early game, you're going to be trying to take over the world. You're going to be trying to take over some nations that will help you. Later game, you're going to be building bases on Mars, asteroids, and deeper into the solar system. And the final phase? Well, that is up to you. Do you join the aliens? Do you fight the aliens? Do you run away from them? You have a host of options. Terra Invicta is also mod friendly, which means that you can also start modding this game to make sure you have exactly the experience that you want. Now, this game is still quite young at the moment when I'm recording this video, so there might not be that many mods. But the fact that it is mod friendly does mean that this game probably has a very long lifespan and that is going to keep at least me engaged for a very long time. Now, it is a game that you can pause at any moment. It is not multiplayer. It is purely single player. And you can pause at any moment by hitting the spacebar in case you need to get up and tend to your kid. If you're looking for a more relaxed game, I highly recommend Surviving Mars. This is a survival city builder on Mars. And here too, you take one of the various factions that are available. They will each play slightly different, they each have slightly different goals. And every playthrough is going to be different because you're landing on Mars, but in a different spot. That means a different amount of resources, a different way of setting up your base, your colony, and, well, your fledgling settlement for humanity. It is a very relaxing game. Again, you can hit spacebar at any moment to pause this game, and you can speed it up in case not much is happening. Just remember to not keep it running that much when you're actually moving away from the PC, because this game has a tendency to, if you start running out of any specific resource, 
go into a potential death spiral. If one resource runs out, then for example your power might go out, your power goes out, your people start dying, and at some point you are going to be screwed. So this is definitely one of those games that I highly recommend to play, but do keep an eye on it. Make sure you pause it before walking away. As you progress in Surviving Mars, your colony will grow. You get the ability to build even bigger buildings, which are going to make managing the colony easier. You generate a lot more of your own resources, you become a lot less reliant on Earth. It is this progression that I really enjoy about Surviving Mars. It is this relaxed atmosphere, plus a tech tree, plus a survival element, because as opposed to some other city builders, you cannot just idly spend all your money and it'll all be fine. Nope, you have to make sure that your people have water, your people have food, your people have oxygen, and that your entire operation keeps going. It too is one of those games that you can walk away from and continue to think, like, what is going to be my next step? What do I do next? Where do I go from here? Surviving Mars also comes with mod support, and there are a lot of mods out there. That means that you can change the game as much as you like, up until the point where it does exactly what you want it to do. Add new buildings, add new factions, change the way that your people behave by installing a new AI. A lot of opportunities to make sure that this is going to be your ultimate relaxing game. Next up is ICBM. This is something far less peaceful than surviving Mars. ICBM is about destroying the world, killing as much of the population as possible. Now, this is a game that you can play both in single player and multiplayer. Multiplayer, however, cannot be paused. And as a dad, that might not be ideal. If you're playing with your friends and you suddenly have to get up and walk away from the PC, then there is no guarantee that your friends will not take that opportunity and nuke you to bits. There are a lot of different ways to play this game. In a single player, you're playing against the AI. You have the choice of various different maps, various different scenarios. And this one too comes with mods. The base game is okay, but I highly recommend a few of the mods. One of those is called Dawn at Midnight. And these mods make sure that you have a lot more tools of destruction at your disposal. Since you're playing against the AI, again, like the other games, hit spacebar and you can walk away safely without any chance of getting killed off by the AI. As for replayability, uh, it's quite high. Because of all the mods, because of all the different strategies, it's going to keep you on your toes. It's going to keep you entertained for a longer period of time. One run, you might decide that you want to go with a lot of air power. The next run, you might decide to go with a bunch of submarine boomers. The submarines which carry the nuclear ballistic missiles. Or you can just set up a whole bunch of silos on the continental US and start blasting the rest of the sphere with that. Again, it is entirely up to you. But every choice that you make in this game means that you're either focusing more on offense or defense and finding the right balance, especially in multiplayer, is going to keep this game really, really interesting. The final game I have played a lot of is Seven Days to Die. This is a game that can be played in multiplayer but doesn't have to. Your objective is to play as a survivor in a zombie infected world. You need to survive. This means you need to keep fed, you need to keep yourself healthy, and you need to try not to die. How you go about that is entirely up to you, as this is a sandbox game built with a crafting system, and that allows you to play the game very much as you see fit. The way that I played it is with several mods installed, notably the one that you're looking at is called Darkness Falls, and I used to play this with one of my buddies on a multiplayer server. Now, it was a closed server, and the way that we'd go about it is that if my character was at some point at risk, while I had to tend to my kids, I could simply log out. Now, you might call that a bit exploity, but hey, it is the game that you want to play, and you can play it as you see fit. Seven Days also includes a bunch of base building, it includes mining resources, it includes leveling up. There are quests that you can try and undertake to make yourself better, to up your level of gear, and as you go up through the stages, the challenge increases. The apex of that is that every seven days, there is a large horde coming for you. Ready or not, they will come. 
they will try to get at you wherever you happen to be. So you best be ready. Every seven days you need to try and survive one of those hordes. Again, you can play this in multiplayer, but you don't have to. In case you're playing single player, at any point you can click escape, sorry, you can hit escape, and you can stop playing the game, wait for a better opportune moment when you have pacified your kid, when you've changed that diaper, or when you have otherwise tended to your kid in a way that it needs from you. It is also a game that keeps you engaged even when you're not playing, because it gets you to think, how do I want to develop my character next? How do I want to develop this base? What is a way to make sure that I optimize my chances for survival? Seven Days does get better when you're playing together with somebody else, because you can divide labor, you can interact, and of course you can together build a survival base. Ideally, playing with a friend is also going to be a way to not just catch up with your friends, because you might not have as much time for that, but also to keep thinking about the game when you're not actively playing it. One of you might be gathering the resources, the other one might be going, hey, if you can find this, that'd be great. And that's the way that I played it with my friend. I have a lot of hours in seven days. Um, I wouldn't recommend playing this with your kid in your lap, because this might not be the thing that you want them to see first. But it is a game that you can sink a lot of time into. You can pause at any time. Now, to be clear, these are just a few of the games that you could be playing. Notable mentions, Stellaris. Very easy to sink a lot of time into. Again, mod friendly. Just make sure you don't play it with other people because you're going to be either not managing your empire or you're going to be telling them to pause all the time. The same can be said for Hearts of Iron, any of the versions. Hearts of Iron is, of course, a grand strategy game, much like Stellaris, much like Terra Invicta. And it is also going to allow you to pause at any time. Think over the game as you are tending to your kid, if you so have the time to do so. And then pick up the game the moment that you get back to your PC. Avorian, another game that is quite relaxing, that is building a ship in space, and thus building a space empire out at large. The same can be said for Space Engineers. I think Space Engineers is better if you do it in multiplayer, but you can play it single player just as well. Stormworks is another favorite of mine, I played a lot back in the day. It is a game where you develop your own research, sorry, your own rescue, search and rescue organization. You try to build your best ship. You make sure that the people who need to get picked up from a ship get picked up, get dropped off to a hospital. Fires need to be put out. Cargo needs to be picked up. There's always something to do in Stormworks. And of course, RimWorld. That's the one I'm going to end with. RimWorld also has a lot of replayability. It has a lot of mods for it. And it is a game that you can just walk away from at any moment. And you don't have to worry about your assets getting lost, your units getting killed, or any other way that your game might not really benefit from your absence. And these are just a few of my games. What are you going to play when you eventually have to frequently, potentially more frequently than you would like, step away from the PC? That means fewer multiplayer games. What are you going to play? Let me know down below in the comments. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and let me know down below in the comments what you would play yourself. If you want to pick up any of the games that I've mentioned, please check the links in the description. These are links that help out the channel directly if you purchase through them. Thanks for watching. Good luck with gaming while having a kid. It can be done. It's not necessarily easy, but I hope you will have a good time.